The tyres and the fuel will also degrade and go lower. So the first race of the junior club division gets underway now here at Cowpen. And uh, at the minute, I'm just seeing that all bar one of the 15 competitors look to be on the sighting lap. And actually looks like, as I've just said that, the 253 of Neville Fisher, uh, who's starting on the in outside of row number three on P6. So it's Leonel uh, Lang uh, Langlotz, uh, Alexander Kappa, that is the front row with Langlotz on pole. Finn Kruber, uh, Mats Johan uh, Overhoff, that is uh, the 231 and the 265, that's row two. Phil Vogel and Neville Fischer, that is row three. With uh, Gregor Feigenspan and Maxim Blöscher, that's row four. With Dennis Thiem and Variata, Variato Wildemann rounding out the top ten. Completing the 15 strong is the 233 of uh, Janusz Tiak, the 286 of Luigi Gazzo, 277 uh, of Jake uh, Bezel, uh, Bezelbecker, uh, 234 of Finn Stiak and uh, Joni Mertz, and the 235 round out the 15 strong. So now it's time for uh, a class that I hold dear to my heart in Rotax racing circles. I've, I've always enjoyed uh, keeping an eye on how the juniors get on. And this is a different experience for me seeing both a club and a national uh, category in a respective championship. So this is their penultimate race of the season and we'll find out how things get on very very shortly as they now start to get into formation for their first of two races. Their second one will be at 10 past two this afternoon local time here in Cowpen. Very nicely organised, a few stragglers at the back. So full yellow course condition, uh, yellow flag conditions, as the 253 of Nevio Fisher I think will start should start from the back as a result of being late uh, out of the dummy grid. Uh, so the 253 of Fisher got a lot of work to do from around 15th place as they go through the Schumacher chicane. So it's Langholtz and Kappa on the front row. Langholtz on pole. Let's see the Rotax engines roar into life. Do we go lights out? Looks to be a clean getaway. Everyone makes it through the first corner. But no, they haven't. And someone's gone spinning into the barriers. Manages to rejoin. And uh, because the grass is still very, very damp here, it's, it's pirouetting just on the outside of turn number one. And that is the 255. And that is Maxime Blöscher, who is not, who's not best pleased about what happened. Didn't really catch anything, but might have just gone a bit wide because it was nearly three abreast going through the first corner. And it's quite a long sweeping one. So we've got 10 minutes and 24 seconds, plus an additional lap left to go. So blusher has got a lot of work to do. Going to be interested to see where Neville Fisher ends up after lap number one. But the battle for the lead is quite clearly on, as it is now the tooth. Now, is that, that's been a bit of a change there, because the, the field has gone a bit topsy-turvy. And leading at the moment is the 232 of Variato Wildemann. Alexander Kappa remains in second place. Leonor Langholz has crossed the line in ninth, so there has been an absolute change all the way up and down the order. So probably out of uh, the other side of the circuit, there's been a few uh, comings together, or maybe when everyone went into turn one, not everyone was probably in the position they preferred. And I definitely think that Lang Langholz would have wanted to have been still in P1, but Wildermann has just absolutely catapulted all the way up to P1 on this race. So, they come through the uh, left-hander, which puts them on the approach to the Schumacher chicane. And it is now a three-way scrap. So, Overhoff in the 265 is definitely trying to go up the inside. It's a little bit of argy bargy, but Wilderman still holds on to the lead. It's absolutely going crazy because now you've got Finn Kuber and Feigenspan in the 258 as someone went very wide on the exit of turn number one. I think that might have been Feigenspan there, possibly. But then the lead change could happen as it was nearly side by side between Kappa, uh, who was trying to go up the inside of uh, Wilderman for the lead. So we have 8 minutes and 43 seconds to go. 
uh, plus an additional lap as Wilderman still hanging on and Maxim Blöscher just crosses the line and is uh, quite a considerable amount uh, behind the rest of the field who are with 14 competitors separated by seven and a half seconds on the last lap the battle at the front of the field still rages on as Overhoff was trying to look to be a little bit uh, opportunistic after the uh, as the move for the lead has nearly happened and they're all starting to uh, trip over each other as uh, Kappa goes defensive on Overhoff and now Vogel has Phil Vogel in the 252 in P4 who's now ahead of Finchstack we've had quite a few other changes as Luigi Gazzo now right down to P13 as everyone's just trying to wrestle past each other never mind the uh, slippery greasy conditions here so 7 minutes and 50 plus an additional lap still to go as Overhoff goes defensive on Vogel for P3 but Vogel still on the back bumper of the 265 but they have also closed up on the dueling pair which is Wildermann and Kappa now it is 5 drivers at the front of the field so Wildermann, Kappa, Overhoff, Vogel and now Finch Diak now joins the party as uh, there's a move possibly for second, not quite it's a bit greasy on that inside line so when Overhoff tries to go through and he's just lost out to Phil Vogel for P3 as a result of trying to go up the inside of Alexander Kappa for P2 and the change has happened for the lead as Kappa goes up the inside of Wildermann, Wildermann now responds through turn 3, goes on the inside line and doesn't quite make it through the pair of barging side pods 6 minutes and 53 Left to go, plus an additional lap. Now Vogel is running the back bumper of Wildermann, who is in second place now, having been deposed off of top spot. And now, great purchase from Vogel. He absolutely nailed the traction through that corner and slung shot past uh, Variato Wildermann for what is P2. But it's side by side on the approach off of the back straight. Drivers getting sideways, nearly clattering into each other. And Wildermann gets a bit hin uh, hindered there. So go through into the Schumacher S's. And... At the meantime, there is one drive that's definitely losing out, and it is the 2.99 of Alexander Kappa, who's just been pounced on, and it was nearly three abreast through turn one. And that was by uh, Wilderman and Stiak. So Wilderman now back up into P3. 2.32 of Wilderman now drops down. I think that is Alexander Kappa, just behind the 2.32. So that is for P4. As Finn Stiak now gets uh, up into third position um, but Maxim Blush is going to use this as a text testing exercise I believe because uh, the 255 is still circulating despite the first lap incident but now in the meantime Phil Vogel who's got the lead has started pulling away and was over a second away from uh, Mats Johan Overhoff in the 265 and the gap now was about a second. It's now 2.7 seconds. And it is Argy Bargy at the field from around about P4 onwards. Well, P5. As Wildermann is now battling with the likes of Feigenspan, Fischer, Thiem and Janisztiak. So it's definitely getting a bit interesting, a bit feisty, a bit heated uh, in close quarter combat. So we got to the half-time distance here. Uh, in terms of the timer ticking away just under five minutes remaining plus an additional lap and uh, Kappa trying to fend off uh, now Wilderman I don't think is in fifth place anymore as Phil Vogel is just cruising away and he's probably in another district at this moment Mats Johan Overhoff and uh, Finn Stiak now will start battling away over second position as Alexander Kappa is being is being pressurised by Feigenspan who tries to look towards the inside of turn one and actually gets a great run of momentum through that first corner and it's just a quick flat out right as there's another change there I think but there are drivers just trying to get positions the 231 of Finn Gruber battling over uh, P9 with Nevio Fischer in the 253 that's been an interesting battle thus far But at the minute, there are still battles to be raged and to be won here on the penultimate race of the junior club season. As the 265 
of Mats Johan Overhoff is no longer in second place. Now down in third as Finn Stiak gets past. And there's more battling away now. It looks like uh, Varejato Wilderman now on, uh, well, looks a little bit lonely in fifth place in the 232 as there are yellow flags being brandished at turn number three. There is a cart uh, crabbing a little bit or trying to get back onto the circuit. So someone's gone very, very wide and is going sideways on the slippery wet grass before the, uh, the, uh, the double S's on the back part of the circuit. So we'll find out very shortly who that is. But the battle for second is not over yet. However, they are not, it seems like, even though they're battling against each other, Mats Johan Overhoff, who's now retaken second position from Finn Stiak, uh, they've been battling away, but the gap was quite huge last time. And uh, no, no, Phil Vogel. Phil Vogel was the driver that was uh, beached on the, gra on the grass. So Vogel drops it. And that means that Finn Stiak and Mats Johan Overhoff are battling over the lead of this race. With just over two minutes and 22 to go, as Dennis Thiem in the 269 is battling away with the initial leader, Bayato Wilderman in the 232 for what is fourth place. Looks like Wilderman might have the advantage at the minute. Or might not be the case, as uh, Dennis Thiem, I think, looks to have gotten past. But the two leaders. Now, who's at the front? That is Finn Stiak. Then. Gregor Feigenspan now has come into this as they just literally bump their way over the curbs through the Schumacher chicane. And it's line of stern between the two leaders. So Feigenspan gets a really good run on Finn Stiak going down towards turn number two. Has got the inside line, could outbreak the, uh, the 234, does so. But then Finn Stiak responds on the switchback through the exit of turn number two. So Stiak did a really good switch back there. Knew that uh, the possibility that Feigenspan could outbreak him going into turn two. But then Stiak just went, well, I'm going to go slightly wide. I'll get the better purchase coming out of the corner. And the switch back, as a result of it, worked. So now Stiak drops Feigenspan a little bit further. So we've got just over 60 seconds remaining, plus an additional lap left to go. So they cross the start finish line. So this is probably going to be the, pen I think, this might be the penultimate lap of the race. Just depends on how many seconds it now takes them to get round as uh, Stiak wrestles with the cart to keep it on the inside line through turn two. Now into the left-hander at turn number three as uh, Bilderman battling away. And that is with the 252 of Phil Vogel who's recovered after that excursion on the grass through sort of looks to be probably, I would have thought, maybe say about turns uh, five and six and seven having put it on the grass earlier on we've got uh, just over 15 seconds remaining and there has been another change now I'm just keeping an eye there as uh, it's now Gregor Feigenspan in the 258 that's now leading so what's happened to Finch Diak down in second place ahead of Mats Johan Overhoff so last lap has been shown let's talk under and Feigenspan has a gap of just over two seconds ahead of Dennis Thiem. A little bit further down the order. Bilderman and Fischer were definitely uh, battling with each other. So Fischer started on the last row of the grid and is now up to P5. Could make it P4 by the end of this race. So Feigenspan leads by about two seconds from Dennis Thiem. Mats Johan Overhoff in P3 ahead of uh, Variato Wilderman. Neville Fischer rounds out the top five. So for the final time through the left-hander after the long back straight comes Feigenspan in the 2.58 through the Schumacher uh, chicane for the final time. Round the last corner comes the number 2.58 of Gregor Feigenspan who takes a very uh, well fought for victory by just over two seconds from Dennis Thiem in the 269 and it was nearly side by side uh, between the likes of that was Nevio Fischer and Phil Vogel going side by side over the start finish line 
And it was Vogel that lost out by... Well, no, it was Wilderman and Fischer. Wilderman and Fischer were separated by 25 thousandths for what was P4. So Gregor Feigenspan takes the win in the 258 ahead of Dennis Thiem in the 269 uh, by just over two seconds. Mats Johan Overhoff rounds out the top three in the 265 with Variato Wilderman in the 232, uh, beating Neville Fischer to P4 at the end of the race by just 25 thousandths of a second. They were just over three and a half tenths ahead of uh, Phil Vogel, who rounded out the top, top six with Finn Stiak in the 234, rounding out the top seven. Alexander Kappa in uh, the 299 would finish eighth ahead of Janis Stiak and pole sitter Leonor Langlotz, who rounded out the top ten. Finn Gruber finished in 11th ahead of Luigi Gazzo in the 286. Maxim Blöscher, uh, Jake uh, Bezelbecker and uh, Joni Mertz uh, rounding out the 15 strong. So a very entertaining first junior club race. Their second one will start the afternoon's action, their second and final round, uh, final race of the week end and also of their season will be at around about 10 minutes past two local time. So Max, 